Hi, I'm Susie from Nail Crew Education, and a great way to spice up the nails is to add glitter. That's what I'm going to do today. Now when you're adding glitter, the choice of glitter makes all the difference. I'm going to choose this really pretty, actually it's in my kit. I released a kit recently. And it's a starter kit for learning how to do nails. And that's why I'm including this plastic finger. And that's what we're going to work on today. If you're a nail technician, of course, this will be tips for you to actually apply on real people. This is the glitter we're going to add. And there's a couple of designs you can do. Well, there's many designs you can do. I'll show you a couple today. Get some paper towel. I've got my glass dish. This is included in my kit. And if you don't have my kit, that's okay. You just have whatever you have. And we'll do this together. I'm just going to pour enough just to cover almost at the bottom, really. Not too much. You never want to pour your liquid back into the bottle because once it is exposed to any type of powder or your brush, even a little bit of powder can activate it. And if you pour it back in, it ruins the whole bottle. So you don't want to do that. Oh, this is eternal beige. Um, Caraman, can you get me some clear, please? Sorry, she's not prepared. Thank you. There I go. That's my clear. Okay. And you want it clear because we're going to put it over top and you want that clear to be seen. Okay. I'm going to put my pink underneath. I mean, there's so many combinations that you can do. Sometimes you just kind of wing it, right? Okay, got my nice brush. Now, before I do it, I always get my brush. I just kind of get it completely wet. Even though I'm going to dab it off the side, I still want to get it completely wet. Okay, so my brush is ready to go. I'm going to get my form. Now, I'm not going to etch these plastic fingers because I don't want it to stick on there. I did a little video on how to pop it off because a lot of people were asking me how to pop it off. I'm going to put my form on. I have done a video about how to apply forms. I'm going to put my glasses on too. Okay, so when you're putting your glitter bits inside, this is really kind of called an inlay too. You can place these in polish as well, but we're going to inlay them in between layers of acrylic. Now in order for these mylar bits, you want them to stick to something. So we're going to do a thin layer of something down first. I'm going to use this beautiful pink. So I'm going to get my brush and wet with some liquid on it. I'm going to just sort of hit the side of it so I don't get too much liquid in my brush. You can feel it after a while. Okay, so I'm going to get a bead of my base that I'm going to put down. There's several ways you can place a bead on a finger and that is to roll it off or just to swipe it off. There's really no wrong way to do that. Now I'm just going to extend this bead out as a platform. I'm going to do this rather thin because whenever you do an inlay, that means bits inside. Now an inlay can be, I've seen people do little computer chips, that looks really cool. Um, caviar beads, girls at work were going nuts and cutting up pictures and you just place it inside the nail. As long as it's encapsulated in the clear makes it an inlay. So do this layer quite thin. This is just the thin layer to put your beads or your paper or your glitter on top of. So see how thin that is across there? That's what we're looking for. So here's another way I can show you. You can literally Swipe the product like that too. That's another way to release it off your brush. We don't have to do the cuticle area because we're not doing a real nail here, but I'm gonna show you the full thing. Okay, so here's your little bits. Now I kind of throw them, see that? So just dump them on your paper towel or whatever you're working with, because you want them to sort of spread out a little bit so you can pick them up individually. They are so thin, you could pick up three or four or five at once. So spread them out quite a bit. Obviously I've dumped out way too many. All you need to do is you don't need any powder and liquid together. You just need a little bit of liquid on the end of your brush. And you can literally just pick one up. And you can literally place it. 
you could get really very specific in where you want them to be. And again, you can just do them random. Now, of course, the wetter the surface is, the easier it will stick. You've got a green or a yellow or whatever color you're working with. You want to add a little more pizzazz or spice to it. You can just add these to anything. Again, you can even add them to a top coat of polish. They're super thin. There we go. Got a whole bunch in there. Now, sometimes if the surface of the acrylic gets a little dry, you could take a little bit of acrylic and paint it on. You just don't want to get too thick. And so it gets it in there. You can even go, if it's a little bit stubborn, you can even take a little tiny bead of acrylic, pick it up with it, and then lay it on that way. That works too. I got a lot in there now. It's loaded. Okay, so I'm gonna show you, if you look down again, or even sideways, see how thin that is? It's not very high at all. And if you look down this way, you can see it's quite flat. Now you're gonna take a big bead of acrylic, clear, and you're gonna encapsulate it. You wanna do that because this stuff is not meant to be filed directly. You don't wanna hit your file to it. So you wanna make sure there's quite a bit of clear on top of there. This will be your structure layer. So you want this to have a nice arch and you want it to be thick enough to cover the entire nail. And you wanna lay it on top because you don't want these to move around. You want to have a really good liquid to powder ratio. This is really important when a design like this. And you literally just let it fall on top. Clean your brush. And then just gently pat it down. And just let it engulf all the design. going to just press with the barrel of my brush that bead at the cuticle there just so I don't have a big chunk to file. See how it just encases it? It's completely protecting all those bits. And now I'm just going to take a bead at the cuticle and just smooth it out a bit some strength back there. There we go. Look at it sideways. You just want to check and make sure that you've got everybody encased. Looks pretty good. I'm just going to turn it over sideways here for you. See this side here? I think it's pretty good, but just to be double sure, I'm going to take a little bead and just put a little bit more in there just to be sure. There's nothing worse when you let it dry completely, you put all your stuff away, you take the form off and you missed a little section, you wish you added just a little bit more of acrylic, the time it would have taken just to make sure you've got it in there. Not that you can't add it later, but it's a pain. There we go. That's cute. Okay, so now I'm just going to let this cure up. It takes about 90 seconds to, you know, up to three minutes for it to completely cure. And that is hardened so we can get ready to file it. And in that meantime, while I'm waiting for it to dry, I just make sure my brush is completely clean. And I just sort of roll it. Just make sure I'm keeping that point. It's really, really important. There's nothing in it too. It's all moving quite nicely. And then I just store it with my cap. And it's best to store it like this. Okay, this is about dry now. So now I'm gonna file it all up. So once it's dry, you can take off your form. This is just on a plastic tip. It's not gonna hurt anything, but just take it, pinch it, pull it down. Okay. And then 
and you want to get a file. Now we're going to file this in an almond shape. An almond is interesting. I always do my nails square first. Unless I'm doing an almond, I will, um, sometimes I'll shape it like an almond, but I want to file it from an almond to really show you that. So with an almond, you want to take it from the side, each side, find where your end is going to be. So let's say our end is going to be about here. You want to draw a line from there to there in your mind, like this, but just do it a bit of a bulge to it. Same with on this side. You want to take the end is going to be here, you just want to do a bulge to it. So on that note, when you're filing, take it sideways, you want to file that corner right up and out of there. Look how fast you can do that, right? And take the other corner and do the same. And take it right out. But what I'm trying to do is take my file so I know this is the point and I want to bring my file so it's right around in here. I bring it right up to that point. Because I've determined where it's going to be if I draw a line on the center of it in my mind. Just like a straight line right in the center. That's going to be where my point is going to be. So that's where I'm trying to bring the sides to that point. But do keep it fat here because almonds do have a tendency, they're right straight on the side and they go to the point like that, but they don't go like this. They definitely have a roundness to that tip. So you don't ever want to get rid of that. If you do, you kind of have to reform it and bring it back again. Don't want to do that. So I determine my almond shape first or whatever shape I'm working on. Then I'll file the top side. Now you do have a video, you can check that out. I'm just going to quickly shape it. And once you've determined your shape and you've sculpted it, it's kind of a pointy element, I'm then going to finish it, start making it a bit smoother for my nail polish application. Now if you're doing a gel top coat, you can leave it on the rougher side. Gel prefers that so it sticks. But if you're doing a nail polish, you want to make it as smooth as you can get it. Now I do have a couple of files in here. This one takes it down, it's called a smoothie, and it does make it nice and smooth. And this one I've provided for you has one, two, three, four sides. And the rougher one you can start with, I'll show you, it's kind of cool. It's like you gotta go down in the different grades of the file to produce it. You can't just go right to the smooth one right away. You gotta make sure you go down in the levels. And then you can do this side. It's a bit smoother even more now, even still. And then you go to the white one on the other side. Hopefully you can sort of see it a bit. It's even smoother. It's really nice. Okay. And then this one here, this light gray is almost like a chamois shims it up nice and smooth. Now if it's a real person you're doing, you would oil up the whole finger and the cuticle and massage that in nicely. They would go wash their hands and then you could polish them. In this case, it's not a real person. You want to get rid of all your dust. I like a little nice little duster. You can use a makeup brush. This one's nice and soft. And then I'm going to get my top coat just a nice, clear, shiny top coat. And you just want to put a nice, decent coat on top of there. Look at that pop. So just let that dry a little bit. The first coat kind of soaks in, kind of absorbs a little, and creates kind of a matte finish. So by the time you finish your, all your 10 fingers, you can start it back with the pinky again and start doing the second coat. The second coat gives it a nice shine. One thing I kind of like, I don't know if cameraman probably notices this more than anything because he's always looking to make things in focus for you. If you get these uh, sparkle bits doubled up like one underneath each other, like not totally lined up, it looks like it's out of focus. <laughs> I kind of like that. It looks good. I like that. Looks neat, doesn't it? Uh -huh. I put it over a very, very light pink, so it has a very see-through look to it. But if you put it over black or a bright blue like this or pink, obviously any color, but Certain colors would make it pop a little bit more, but that's really neat. I love it. 
Beautiful. I think it's time for the reveals. I love the shape. Well, clearly, I love the shape. It's what I always wear. <laughs> I love doing that. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you in the next video.